Hey, it's Bluebird. I'm a Canadian distiller making spirits in the UK. Welcome back. And if you're new to this channel, hello. If you're interested in distilling and more about the drinks industry, then this is the channel for you. A couple of weeks ago, I got my very first video request to explain more about the filtration process after I've made the gin. So Blake Michelson, this video is for you. Let's go. We use deionized water to dilute or cut back the gin here. Now a lot of people have asked why we use deionized water instead of reverse osmosis water to cut back the gin, since RO water is more commonly used for this purpose. So let's take a look at how RO water and deionized water differ. RO water has gone through a reverse osmosis filtration system, so we need to first understand what osmosis is. Let's say we have a glass of water that is divided by a semi-permeable membrane. Semi-permeable, meaning that some things can pass through the membrane while other things cannot. On one side, we dissolve 10 tablespoons of salt, and on the other side, we dissolve 1 tablespoon of salt. Osmosis is defined as a process by which molecules of a solvent, in this case water, tend to pass through a semi-permeable membrane from a less concentrated solution into a more concentrated one. In this case, the water will move from the side with one tablespoon of salt to the side with 10 tablespoons of salt. Reverse osmosis, as the name suggests, is the opposite of osmosis. So we change the direction of the solvent, water, through the semi-permeable membrane. Instead, the water moves from the side with 10 tablespoons of salt, which has the higher concentration, to the side with 1 tablespoon of salt, which is lower in concentration. This is what is happening in the reverse osmosis filtration system. But instead of salt being dissolved in the water, it's contaminants dissolved in the water. The side with the higher concentration of contaminants is left behind on one side and can be disposed of. RO systems are pretty affordable and they can remove 90 to 99% of contaminants from water. At this distillery, we use deionized water, which we get delivered over in 1000 liter IBCs that look like this. What is deionized water, you ask? Well, it's water which has had ions such as calcium, chloride, and sodium ions removed from it through an ion exchange process. This means the water has no charge and will not react with electricity. Deionized water can be purchased in various grades of purity. And I was doing some research online and it turns out that high grade deionized water goes through several pretreatment processes prior to getting deionized. And one of those pretreatment processes happens to be the RO filtration system, which will remove the majority of the contaminants from the water leaving only the smallest particles for the deionization filter to get rid of. So a high grade of deionized water is more pure than just RO water since it has undergone the reverse osmosis filtration prior to being deionized. So which type of water is best for cutting back gins? Well, the thing with deionized water is it has to be used immediately. Once the deionized water is exposed to air, it starts to react with the carbon dioxide in the air and degrade. So it will have an electrical charge again. At the distillery, we use deionized water, which we get delivered in 1000 liter IBCs. So when I need to use it, I'll open up the top hatch of the IBC. I'll put my pump in to pump it out. And that will usually last me about three weeks. So it's fair to say that the deionized water is regularly exposed to air um, and it probably isn't really deionized by the time I'm finished using it. As well, rainwater definitely gets into the IBC over time, so it's not that pure. <laughs> With that in mind, RO water is better for general use in the distillery since it is cheaper and removes a broad spectrum of contaminants and dissolved solids. 
The RO filtration removes 90 to 99% of the contaminants in water. So if you use RO water to cut back the gin to the right concentration, you can be confident that you're adding water that is high in purity. After I've cut back the gin, I roll it to the other room to be filtered, bottled, and labeled and packaged by my coworkers. It gets filtered through here and this piece of equipment houses a 0.5 micron filter to remove dissolved solids from the spirit that are larger than 0.5 microns in size. Here you can see the propylene filter cartridges. And ah, uh, there's Jazz modeling the use of the bottling machine. This is a big batch of gin here, about 600 liters. So it goes from the IBC through the filter and then into the single head bottle filler. We call it a single head filler since it can only fill one bottle at a time. They've been filling a lot of these mini bottles lately. It's expected that because of the pandemic, most people will be going online and gifting these mini tasting gin sets, which is why sets of gin miniatures are being requested more and more from our customers' brands. Once bottled, all the bottles are hand labeled and then packed up in their gift set packs to be sent away. In this video, we went over the differences between reverse osmosis water and deionized water, and which one is better for cutting back gin. This will be my last video from In the Welsh Wind Distillery. Where am I going next? And more importantly, what spirits will I be making next? Well, that's for me to know and you to find out. Please support the channel by giving this video a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button for more distilling and distillery videos. This is Brewbird sending good vibes your way. I'll see you next time.